On July 27, 2011, this is Pulling You, number 71. Greenbridge friends, it's Michael here at Bridge Hands. Welcome to Day 2, Part 1, on Incredible Defender Lessons for Active Aggressive Leads Against Opponents in a Suit Contract. Okay, let's begin. As you'll recall from our previous lesson, to be a good opponent, we have to think like the opponent's opponent. What's that you say? Well, if we're going to be a good defender, we have to know what is in the declarer's mind, what's their play strategies, so we can take effective countermeasures. So as a, for instance, the declarer often pulls Trump. Why? Because they want to avoid us from roughing a suit that they want to promote. They don't want us to get tricks that are undeserved by roughs before they can pull Trump and capture those tricks themselves. Another would be to pull Trumps to promote their long side suit, being able to pitch losers on that suit. So the first two common ones are for the declare to pull Trump. Another might be if they don't have the ace in the Trump suit, they might want to start taking some finesses, maybe repeated finesses, maybe finesses back and forth, being able to pitch losers, maybe not on a long suit, but on long enough of a suit that they can pitch a side suit losers. Of course, a more common one would be too rough using dummy shortness. Yes, where the dummy has three or four trumps and a singleton or a void and a side suit, the declare would like to rough those losers in that suit right away, even before pulling trump. They don't want to use those precious trump when they can use them for roughing power. In fact, you'll recall that when you've been evaluating your hand and you have length in declarer's trump suit and a side suit shortness, we like to count extra distribution points. And the fifth the variation would be to cross rough between hands, getting roughs back and forth where they're imbalanced hands between the two players. In our last lead lesson where opponents are in a suit contract, you'll recall that we discussed classic leads from the defender's perspective. The opening leads included the very safe lead, ace from ace king, the top of an honor sequence. Do you recall those? Yes, we have a solid suit. That's easy enough. We play the top of the sequence. When we have a broken sequence where we have four cards with a breakage, we play the top of the connected honors. The next would be leading partner's bid suit. This gets a little bit more tricky. When we haven't supported the suit and we have a doubleton, we play high-low. When we've supported the suit, showing that we have three or more, we play high-low and we don't have an honor. But when we do have an honor, we play low to show that we do have support for partners bid suit. So we have several variances that we need to be clear with with our partner to be able to get the best play strategy. Another would be the fourth best lead, although unlike a no trump contract, here we wouldn't have an ace. We would not lead away from an unprotected ace, but we like to lead away from a king or a queen, but not so much away from a jack. And of course, the top of nothing. Yes, when we don't have anything in the suit, we have no better lead. Sometimes we just make a passive lead, the top of nothing. Or if the opponents are in a lower level contract, say such as maybe two of a minor or major, perhaps the next to top of nothing, just in case that nine or ten might score a trick. Well, to be sure, whether the opponents are in a suit contract or a no trump contract, there is one thing in common. Bridge is a thinking game. Yes. And it requires counting. If you like counting, you are going to love defending in bridge. We want to count points. How many points are around the table based upon the bidding, based upon the opening lead, based upon the cards in the dummy, and based upon the declarer's line of play? How about counting distribution? Right. We want to see how many cards there are in the varying suits to know who might get a rough, who might be wanting to promote a suit. Counting the tricks. What is the auction level? How many tricks have been made so far? What's the declarer's line of play strategy on how we can maximize our tricks? And to be sure, to be able to take a look at those inferences based upon declarer's line of play, our partner's signals, so that we as a partnership will have a plan, hopefully one that we can have in concert together to orchestrate the maximum number of tricks. From a tactical opening lead and line of play strategy, there are about four different types. And the one we're going to focus on today is active defense. Yes, an aggressive defense where we need to win the race getting our tricks before the declarer gets theirs. Just like in a no trump contract, they're trying to promote a suit. And as we saw earlier, some of their play strategies would be to promote a suit or to be able to get some quick roughs. Sometimes we have to be able to make an active defense, making an aggressive lead to be able to thwart that effort. The opposite, of course, would be a passive defense. And we'll take a look in contrast when we might not want to make 
an active defense lead strategy. A third would be to gain roughs or to reduce the opponents from getting roughs on short side suits. We'll take a look at one of those hands today. And a fourth would be to eliminate Trump. That is to promote our suit tapping the declares Trump. And during the play of the hand, we'll see another one that does just this very thing. So to summarize, we make an active or aggressive defense when the opponents may be setting up a long side suit, when the opponents may want to set up for roughs and cross roughs, or the opponents are in a high level contract, that is a five or six level suit contract, when the partnership has tennises that are in jeopardy, and desperate times call for desperate measures. That is, we want to get our tricks quickly before they promote extra tricks themselves. Let's begin. On our first hand, South is a dealer and opens one spade. We look at our hand and hold a 4432, two spades, four hearts to the nine, and diamonds, ace three times, and in clubs, king, jack, nine, four times. We'll pass. North bids two hearts, showing a five card suit and at least ten points. South bids two spades, ostensibly a six card suit, although some people might play it with five if they have an imbalanced hand, depending upon their partnership agreements. North bids three spades, showing belated spade support. Could be three, could be two, since South ostensibly has six spades. And after four spades, the auction passes out. What do we want to lead here? Well, with eight high card points, our partner could have six or seven points, perhaps. So we'd want to make an aggressive lead since we're concerned about some pitches on this dummy heart suit. They do have a five card suit, and that could yield some pitches. So we want to make an aggressive lead of the two of clubs. So once again, our concern is that the declare will be able to promote the dummy heart suit, and we don't want to lose extra tricks that might be attributable in our club suit. Perhaps our partner might have a useful club, either a queen or an ace. If a partner has an ace, this would be ideal. A low to the ace, a club back, and if the declare has the queen, we can get some quick tricks in clubs before they get some pitches on the heart suit. On our second hand, south is a dealer. Righty opens three clubs. Typically, this is with a seven-card suit, although since two clubs is a strong bid, some will make it with a six-card suit, unable to make a weak two bid. If so, righty should have a strong suit, but we're not sure. If you know your righty, fine. If not, goodness knows what righty has. At any rate, we take a look at our hand, and we have a four-four-three-two in spades. King-10, four times. Two small in hearts. In diamonds, jack ten nine seven, and in clubs, ace three times. We pass. North bids three hearts, a forcing bid showing at least five hearts. And since South has six or seven clubs, we suspect that North probably has five, six, could be even a seven card suit. At any rate, this is a forcing bid. Back to South, South does not have heart support and rebids four clubs, having no interest in three no trump and no interest in four hearts. Back to North, North then bids five clubs, which passes out the auction, and the lead is to us over in the west hand. What do we want to lead here? Well, once again, since we're worried about the dummy's heart suit, we're going to want to make a fairly aggressive lead, actually, through the dummy's strength, the dummy is the stronger hand here, to the declarer's weakness, and hopefully we can catch partner with a useful spade. So we're going to want to make a lead of the two of spades, despite the fact that we have a sequence in the diamond suit. That'll be much too long before we can promote a trick with a jack-10-9 in this situation. A two-level contract, that would be fine. At a five-level contract, we need to hustle to get our tricks. So the two of spades is a good lead. We're hoping that our partner may have an ace or a queen of spades in their hand. After all, we have eight points, so it's quite possible our partner we could catch with two, four, or five points themselves. So our strategy, once again, is to promote our tricks before the opponents can promote theirs. That is the heart suit. We're worried about that heart suit getting extra pitches from the south hand on the side suits, particularly in this case, the spade suit, where we have several honors in our west hand. At the table on our first hand, south is a dealer and is blessed with a wonderful holding in the master suit in spades. King, queen, jack, ten, six times. That's six high and two distribution points makes eight with a almost self-sustaining suit. In diamonds, king, queen, four times, another five high card points for another great suit. Brings us up to 13, and in clubs, queen, three times, another two makes 15, a void in hearts, easily opening one spade. 
Over to West, we have a 4-4-3-2 four, four, suit. 4-4 four, four in the rounded suits, clubs and hearts, but not many points in diamonds, ace three times, in clubs, king, jack, nine, four times, a pass. Over to North, in hearts, there's another great suit. The other major has ace, king, queen, jack, eight spot, ten high, one distribution point, makes eleven, and a, another almost self-sustaining suit. In spades, ace, eight spot. Okay, there's another four. That makes us fifteen. In diamonds, jack, ten, nine. Well, I think that's worth one point with connected ten, nine. So we're up to about sixteen points, and we'll respond two hearts. Over to east, it's a four, triple, three, with only an ace of clubs for values. No bid. Back to south. Well, we have six spades, and although we have no hearts, we'll rebid two spades. Some of you may want to bid three spades. That is a possibility. Let's take a look at the south hand from a losing trick count perspective. Now, we do not have a fit with partner, so technically we're not to use losing trick count, but our hand is almost self-sustaining, so let's just tease ourselves and just see where we would end up. We would have one loser in spade. We would have one loser in diamonds. We're only missing one of the top three. And in clubs, we're missing two of the top three, if you're so inclined to count with queen third. But maybe it's only worth half of a losing trick. So this could be four or five. But here again, since we have a void in hearts, our partner may have a void in spades. So we ought not to be using losing trick counts at this time. So two spades is sufficient. It is a forcing bid after our partner made a two-level bid. Okay, back to North. North, what do you want to bid now? Well, you have some extras, and we think that our partner South has six spades. Now, when a person rebids a suit, do they always promise six? Not always. Some of you may play that it firmly promises six. Fine, if that's your agreements. But I would suggest that if North had bid two clubs, then South has room to bid diamonds or hearts. So if they bid two spades, they ought to have six. If partner North bid diamonds, now we could still bid hearts or spades. So it likely has six. If our partner has bid two hearts, well, there's no room to make another bid. And if two no trump is not a balanced hand, let's say this had five spades with a singleton heart, it doesn't really feel like a balanced hand at all. So when it happens to be one spade, two hearts, the rebid of two spades a lot of players would do it with five, whereas if it was one spade, two clubs, then a person ought not to be bidding two spades unless they have six. That said, if we had these top five, king, queen, jack, ten, seven, that almost plays like a six-card suit. Okay, well, back to the auction. After our partner bids three spades, we in south bid four spades. North wonders if they should be bumping the auction on a little bit further, but is satisfied to play in four spades. And the opening lead is two west. West, what's your lead? Well, as you recall, we want to make an aggressive lead here. When we've heard North bid two hearts, we have some concern that there may be some pitches. And since we have two honors in the club suit, we would want to go ahead and lead a club. Either a two a club, a nine a club would work, but traditionally, when we have bottom of something, we lead the two. We want to make a fairly aggressive lead here. So we're going to lead the two of clubs. A low comes from the dummy. Our partner goes up third hand high with the ace, takes a look at the dummy, and starts to make a plan to come back. Now they see this jack, ten, nine of diamonds, but our partner's played low, bottom of something. And since we over in the east hand only have an ace of clubs, and the opponents didn't have any interest in slam, we believe our partner has some honors in the club suit. We'll come back with a club. A low club goes to the jack. Our partner now caches the ace of diamonds before taking the king of clubs. What's that all about? Well, let's say it was a doubleton in club, and we played the third club. All of a sudden, they'd start taking their tricks. And because we can see this threatening dummy, ace, king, queen, jack, five times, that's a good idea in this situation to cash out the ace of diamonds before they can do some pitches. After winning the ace of diamonds, we then go ahead and get our king of clubs. And yes, there was three clubs held by the south hand. So in recap, the auction was one spade, two hearts, two spades, not three, four spades by north, passing out. The lead by west should be a low club. Notice any other lead 
except with the Ace of Diamonds, which just happens to work out, but then you have to come back with a club anyway, is that any other lead in hearts or spades is going to spell bad news, isn't it? They're going to be pitching off all their clubs on this dummy heart suit. And going back to original handy valuation from South, remember we don't want to count losing trick count until we have a partnership agreement on the suit. And in this case, we do not really have a fully self-sustaining suit. If you had Ace, King, Queen, Jack six times, maybe. But King, Queen, Jack ten six times, semi-self-sustaining. If partner is a singleton, yes, then we're in good shape. We can probably get five out of the six tricks. But with this holding, don't be so quick to use losing trick count. And as you'll recall, the question on whether we should count the queen as a loser or not, or a half of a loser, in this case, all three of these turned out to be losers, didn't they? Okay, very good. Let's look at our next hand. On our second hand at the table south has a very interesting hand with a 7-3-2-1 shape. In clubs, king, queen, jack, ten, seven times. I would say this is a self-sustaining suit, no matter what partner has. It's unlikely the opponents are going to have ace, nine, five times, so we should only lose one trick no matter what with this holding. So we have six high plus three distribution points makes nine. In hearts, we discount a stiff honor, so rather than three, we'll give that two. Gives us 11 and nothing in the pointed suits. So what do we want to bid here? One club, three clubs, what's your pleasure? I think in first seat, with a minor, I would go three clubs, regardless of the vulnerability. Now, what's the chance we preempt our partner in first seat? It's a one and three, right? There's two other opponents have yet to bid, so it's a one and three. In second seat, it's a 50% chance that we're going to preempt our partner. So second seat is not as good a seat to preempt as it is first seat. Now, if you made these club spades, I'm going to open it one spade every time with this holding because I can rebid the suit several times if I need to. How many losers do I have? I have one loser in clubs. I'm not sure about my loser in hearts. And I have five losers in the pointed suits. If my partner has an entry and a queen of hearts or an ace of hearts, we're going to take a lot of tricks. But with only about seven losers, this is not a bad hand. But once again, in first seat, in a minor, I would like to open this three clubs. Okay, over to West. It's a 4-4, four, 3-2 four, suit. In spades, king 10, four times. In diamonds, jack 10, nine, seven spot. In hearts, two babies. And in clubs, ace three times. It's a pass after three clubs. And then to North. North has a nice heart suit. Ace, jack, nine, eight, seven, six times. In clubs... Well, some support for partner there. Nine, eight, three in spades, ace, jack, six. And in diamonds, a, another questionable. This time it's a stiff king in the other red suit in diamonds. How do we evaluate this hand? Well, I'm not inclined to give it length points in hearts with ace, jack, nine, eight, seven, six times since our partner in the south has made a preemptive bid. So for high card points, there is five. Another five in spades makes ten. In diamonds, unlikely our partner's got an ace. In fact, in first or second seat, I would say preempting at the three level with an outside suit ace is wrong, wrong, wrong. Now at the two level, I don't have a problem with that. But at the three level, if you have distribution points, because you're going to have two of the top three, if you have an outside ace in first or second seat, it just doesn't make sense. You have an opening hand. So I don't think we should give too much value for this king either. Once again, it may be worth two, but because partner preempted, it may be worth less. But our partner may have some heart support. Our partner may have three hearts, so we can go ahead and bid three hearts, a forcing bid, and we don't really have a problem with that because we do have the three clubs to come back to four clubs if necessary. So after three hearts, over to the east hand. In diamonds, ace-queen five times. In spades, queen-nine-eight four times. In hearts... Queen 10 four times, and as expected, a void in clubs after lefty, that south, three club opener. It's a pass. Back to south, having heard three hearts with a stiff king of hearts, what next? Well, it could be a five card suit, although we do like the fact that we have a king. I believe we want to go back to four clubs to show this wonderful club suit. So four clubs is our bid, pass by west, back to north, now what? Well, we certainly didn't want to play in three no trump anyway with our stiff king of diamonds. So the question is, do we go to five clubs? 
Well, we have some roughing values in the diamond suit, so if our partner, the declare, will have an opportunity to rough some diamonds, that might be useful with our clubs. So perhaps five clubs is a good bid. So after five clubs, the auction passes out. On the play of the hand, West is sure lead. What do you wish to lead here? Do you want to lead the Jack of Diamonds? How about an Ace of Clubs and another club to reduce roughing power? Away from the Hearts, North Spid Suit? Or a Spade? Well, the lead we'd want to do would be a Low Spade. We want to make an aggressive lead in this auction. We're concerned about North's ability to go ahead and promote the heart Suit. So we're going to go ahead and lead a Low Spade. We get an Ace of Spades from the North Hand our partner an encouraging eight of spades from the east hand and a low spade comes from south. Okay, Declare, what's your strategy at this point? Well, you'd like to go ahead and rough some of your diamonds in the north hand and we'd also like to play our king of hearts and then get some pitches on the ace of hearts. Do we have entries to the dummy? Yes, we do. That nine and eight of clubs are going to be very valuable once the ace of clubs has been removed. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and play a low heart up to the king. We then are going to play a diamond back up to the king in the north hand, won by east's ace. Okay, east, what are you going to come back in now? Well, hopefully you'll be a cooperative partner. Your partner started with a low spade, and you're going to go ahead and play a low spade yourself, showing that you have spades and you like the suit. So we play a low spade to partner's king. That's eight spades out. There's one left in dummy. Might they fall for triple three? Does South have another spade? We come back with another spade to the jack, to the queen? No. South only had two, so it was a 4-4-3-2, four, 4-4 four, four, four being held in the east-west hand. Roughed by South. South, now that you're in, you can go ahead and start to rough some diamonds, or you can go ahead and pull a couple rounds of trump, knowing that you'll be able to get to this ace of hearts at any rate. Somewhat risky, this declare begins with a club. Nicely ducked by West, although a better lead would be a low diamond roughed and pitch on the ace of hearts. By the way, West should duck the first club in second seat since partner East might hold a singleton king. It is possible that South preempted with no more than the Queen Jack 10 seven times in clubs and lacked a primary honor. Okay, next a second club goes to the Queen, and this time West will cover with the Ace. West, seen from the dummy's perspective, you can either play a club or a heart. You might as well give them their Ace of Hearts since they have an entry to that nine of clubs. So you play a four of hearts to the ace. They then play a heart and rough it in the south hand. And they're going to go ahead and rough this last diamond in the north hand. And at this point, they go ahead and claim the rest of the tricks. They can play a heart up to the jack to the ace, winning the rest of the tricks down one. So let's go ahead and do a postmortem and take a look at this hand again. Back to trick one. The opening lead, a spade two, great. We don't want to lead a heart we certainly don't want to lead a diamond. In this situation, we want to make a more active lead going through the dummy's strength and hopefully getting some tricks on our spade suit before they get a chance to pitch on the heart suit. So you can see with the lead of a spade, we're going to win one spade. The dummy has two. They're not going to be able to get rid of them quick enough because we have the ace of clubs. And as oftentimes happens when the opponents are in trump, if they do not control the ace, that gives a tempo beat for the defenders, right? They can promote one of these spades. Although leading another suit, say such as a diamond, would be less fruitful because now the declare has the tempo beat and they can go ahead and start to cash some tricks before the defenders can get their king or queen of spades. Now, some of you out there are probably thinking, well, how would we do in four hearts? Let's take a look at that. So the auction proceeds one club or maybe three clubs, however it turns out, and ultimately they play in four hearts in the north. So mind you that this time the dummy will be in the south hand and the opening lead will be by the east hand. East will lead a small spade. No doubt about that with this holding. It's not going to lead from a heart with queen jack four times. It's not going to lead an unprotected ace without a guarded honor. And instead will lead a small spade away from a queen. A spade comes out, small from the dummy in south hand. West goes up with the king and north wins with the ace. At this point you'll play a low heart to the king. You'll come back in a diamond to the singleton king there, hoping that it rides. Now, when a singleton king is in the closed hand, the declarer's hand, playing that in an early trick, maybe about trick two, three, or four, is much better than playing it at trick seven, eight, or nine. They will have a much greater sense that you do have a singleton king. So in this situation, playing it at trick two, very good idea in case West had the ace 
and nobody likes to go a second-hand high wondering if it's a singleton king or a doubleton king. At any rate, East now comes back with a queen of diamond, which is promoted, but it is rough by the north hand. North plays the ace of hearts, plays another heart to the ten in the east hand. Well, they were hoping for a 3-3 three, three split, weren't they? It doesn't often happen where it's going to be a 6-3-3-1. Three, three, Remember, 3-3 three, three in the opponent's suit, the defender's is a 36% chance. In this case, it was the more likely 48% chance with a 4-2. Thank goodness it wasn't a 5-1. Okay, now that East is in again, we come back with a diamond. Uh-oh. Rather than playing the spade, they're coming back on diamonds. You see what's happening? They're pumping or tapping the trump from the declarer. Declare had to play a nine of hearts, and it's down to a singleton heart. This is not good. Okay, North, what's your play now? Well, you play a low club to the ten of clubs to the ace held by the west hand, and west is going to come back in a spade to the jack, to the queen. After winning the queen of spades, east, you can show the bad news now by playing the queen of hearts, can't you? The queen covers the jack. Playing the queen of hearts, the jack of hearts is played from the north hand, and north, you're out of trump. Now a six of diamonds and two spades, Wins the last tricks. North-South, how many tricks did you get this time? Five. How many were required? Ten. How many are you down? Five. Mm. Well, obviously, four hearts wasn't the place to be, was it? So in this situation, when our partner opens three clubs, we ought not to go against the grain and insist on four hearts or with a singleton king. Allow the partner to play four hearts. It just isn't enough. And as you can see, lots of bad news. We can do much better playing in five clubs going down one than playing in four hearts going down five tricks. Okay, Bridge friends, I hope you enjoyed part one of our lesson here today. For our free premium and ultra members for our next segment, we will analyze two more hands with bidding and play based on our active lead lessons where opponents are in a suit contract. For our premium and ultra members in part three, we have six more, yes, count them, six more exciting hands and commentary, including uncomfortable leads against slams and other predicaments. And as always, paid members can also download files with hand records of our slideshows and even detailed Microsoft Word documents with complete bidding and play commentary. Of course, if you're not currently a member, we welcome you to regularly begin enjoying membership privileges for under $10 for a three-month subscription. So don't delay. Come on down to Bridge Hands and sign up today. Okay, everyone. See you on the flip side. Bye for now.